pardon the interruption, but I'm Michael Bontoni, a burglar stole Charlie Villanueva's toilet. I'm Tony Kornheiser. Don't look at me. I use a bucket. Okay, seriously. Why would you steal? Are we going to open with bathroom here? Well, there's I mean, How many days is PTI going to resort to that? Just going to tell you that recent events around the country and the world have limited the kinds of <laughs> things all, you know, we, we can make fun of. Right? That's pretty much what we have left. Who would steal a toilet? What what use can what? Are you kidding? Maybe they stole it because it was taller and it was a tall person. What are they going to use it for? They're going to use it as a toilet. Same thing. They're not expensive. You can buy a toilet. Oh, they're expensive. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, of Derek Jeter takes questions. Lane Kiffin runs it up. And Diddy says he's serious about buying the Carolina Panthers. But we begin today with a report in the Boston Globe that the New England Patriots are cracking down on Tom Brady's personal trainer, Alex Guerrero. Guerrero has been banned from the team plane. His sideline pass has been revoked, and he will not be allowed to treat any Patriots players other than Brady in his office at Gillette Stadium. <laughs> Wilbon, big deal, little deal, no deal. It's a big deal to him. It's no deal to the rest of us. First of all, the key phrase in that sentence, in that open was, his office at Gillette Stadium. Right. So the Patriots at some point were either from the influence of Tom Brady or being impressed with the doctor, the trainer, said, come on in, you can set up shop here. Right. But the Patriots don't owe him the opportunity to put up a shingle at their stadium. And they must have thought he was a cultist or something at some point. And they said, enough of you, get out. And it's okay, they own the team, they can do this. Yeah, if the question is big deal, little deal, or no deal, I don't think that goes far enough. I think it's big, big, biggest, bigger. Bigger than biggest. Why? Because it's Tom Brady. Because this is Tom Brady's guru. This is the guy who convinced Tom Brady that to he could eat play. avocado slices? Right. He is the avocado shake meister. Right. Tom Brady thinks he can play till he's 100 years old. And you know what? what? You know what just happened on Sunday, late Sunday? Tom, the, the, the New England Patriots, by making that interception, are in position to go to a Super Bowl again. Okay. So I'm going to ask you this. If you're Tom Brady, don't you look at this as, why are you coming at me? Why are you coming at me? You know, I'm Tom Brady. Maybe you know what your boy is and isn't. And maybe he's great for you, but it doesn't mean maybe there's some liability the Patriots are worried about. I, you know, Tony, look, th this is not unprecedented. There are other franchises in sports where they say to somebody who's been on the team playing and on the sideline, they say, you know what? Right, I know. You've got to go now. I understand Even that. Even though you're friends with whomever, the great lord of the whatever sport it is, you've got to go. Let me go back. So Brady's for a just the latest in a long line. Because I don't know much about this, and neither do you. We don't know a lot of details about no. this. Okay, more details, I'm sure, will be forthcoming. But is he dispensing drugs illegally? Is he breaking the law? Because if he's not, if he's not, then you know what it seems like to me? What? It's a turf battle. I would bet that the okay. New England doctors That's and trainers are saying, franchises get this guy are. I know, Mike, but this is Tom Brady. You don't want to upset his equilibrium. Well, okay, but okay. He's the most important guy you got. Suppose so Brady tell me doesn't why. even care. Well, that, I don't, I don't, don't know. don't know yet. I don't know All that. All right, so suppose I, Brady is a little tired of him. I, and suppose he's I, like that would surprise me. wild zealot and it just got too far. That would surprise me. And now me. Brady says, you know, when, when you're a kid and you don't really want to go play with the guy from down the street and you say, my parents say no, you can hide behind Brady the Brady went on the radio you know, you yesterday in this? Boston and spoke very highly of Mr. Guerrero. Okay. I'm just, the, my question would be, why are you doing this to Tom Brady? Why? Can I, can I tell you what? Seriously. This is a nice story in New England. The rest of us can't give a damn about this. Well, you we will. Can't. You will if Tom Brady. Well, all of a sudden if he says sticks. I'm leaving, yeah. I'm going to exercise my free agent yeah, I'm going out with Dale. Alex Guerrero. We'll go to Buffalo. Yeah. We'll go there, set up yeah, shop. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. We'll see. Go without hood. See how that works yeah. out. If, the, if this was if this was Kevin Durant, you'd want to do seven stories on it. No. Six. Five. <laughs> okay. Let's go to college football. Sort of. Lane Kiffin's Florida Atlantic trashed poor Akron 50 to 3. <laughs> and Kiffin Owl alternated nation, baby. between brutality and sleight of hand to beat the Zips. The game isn't worth recounting, so let's deal with the bizarro head coach, your boy, yep, and the fraudulent 10-year extension he signed to Doug. stay in Boca Raton, right. where you say you're going to retire every week. Most people there are over the age of 90. <laughs> Do you think Kiffin's in this for the long haul, please? Or will he be at the door of some state football factory by the time we get off the air? Did I tell you yesterday that I liked Lane Kiffin? Did I tell you I hoped he'd win by 40? He won by 47, and today I love Lane Kiffin. Don't align yourself with Lane You Kiffin. would be crazy not to consider 
Lane Kiffin. Now, let's understand something. He's going to get you on probation. I understand. I don't know that. The NCAA is coming to your campus. I don't know that. He needs to investigate. I don't know. That. Has he put anybody on probation uh, already? They're at least coming to take a look okay, at you. That's fine. Here's what we know about him. We know that he knows offense at this point. Yeah. I believe a lot of schools will be interested in him. He did something last night that was unbelievably petty. He went for two up 34 to he's three. He's unbelievably petty. Right. As so a, that, he's an unbelievably petty so person. So that is what is peril there, that you can hate him, but can, can you beat him? Can you beat look, him? Look, look, look. The guy can obviously coach at a lot of different levels. But the structure and the demands of at least a legit university, so of the 55, how many schools are in those power Let's five say 60. Let's 60 say there's 60. Okay. Of those schools, 35 to 40 of them have some standards. I realize that some of them have none. Do you, and they don't care. They don't care where the kids are actually going to school. Do you, know he, do you know he discourages kids from I'm going to school? I'm not saying discouraging, Tony. I'm saying that Lane Kiffin, we've seen from his behavior, he just leaves carnage in his wake. And people yeah, get tired of him true. and say, get out. He, a university worth a damn is going to say, don't, I don't, I have a bias. I'm, I'm from a private university, right. which would not allow him within okay. 50 miles of the campus. First of all, unless you know something I don't know, he hasn't put anybody on probation yet. I said His career has been a spectacular series of failures. He gets fired from the Raiders. That was the first thing that happened. He goes to Tennessee, spends one year, leaves, goes to USC. Why would you hire Gets him? fired on the tarmac. Why would you hire him? Gets, I think, Clay, certainly Clay and Nick Saban. Saban may have said, just said, get, get out of out. here. But may have said that. Goes to a school far away. He doesn't even know where it is when he signs on. But let me repeat. Okay. Why would you hire that person? Why would you hire Jim Harbaugh oh, when no, at Jim, the end, Jim when the end of him. four years no, or no, five no. years it ends no, no, badly? No. Jim Harbaugh's not this I, guy. I, I He's think, not. I think you're, I may be nicer to him than he deserves and you may be harsher to him than well, he good, deserves. Good, I balanced you then for smooching him too much on this show. Only because I know you hate him. Yes. <laughs> Derek Jeter met for 90 minutes last night with 200 Marlins season ticket holder, holders, or as we like to say, all the season ticket holders. <laughs> it was a town hall of sorts. Jeter patiently answered questions about the recent trade-off and sell-off of popular and great players. Among the things Jeter said was, quote, you earn trust over time. It's going to be a tough road. It's going to take time and effort. You can't throw money at a problem and dig a bigger and bigger hole. You have to build from the bottom up, unquote. Wilbon, if you were a Marlins fan, would Jeter's presentation have calmed you? For the moment, for the moment. It's Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter can calm anybody. Hand you a gift basket, you're calm. I mean, right? I mean, this is the this is Derek 200 Jeter. season ticket holders, 200 baskets. That's right. Thank and you. So, so yes. But Jeter, and, and, and you do it primarily with the sentence, you earn trust over time. That's true. Nothing Derek Jeter said there is out of line. He's not giving you fake news. He's, he, he's, he's saying something, Tony, that ought to make sense to most people. Now, you may not like it. You may say, the hell with that. I'm a right. fan. I want my team to right. win, and I want to well, be happen sooner than you're promising me. But Jeter was within boundaries, right? We have been through this before with this very franchise. Yeah, twice. We have seen twice. owners come in here who really don't seem to want to spend any money. After winning a World Series? They want to put money in a savings account. Well, at the end of the season, the team with the most money in the bank doesn't necessarily win. You have to invest in players. They got to, I think they've gotten off to a very, very bad start. Derek Cheater is the face of the franchise, but what he's soon going to find out is that they're going to love him for what he did on the field, and he's off the field. Well, is he so Jerry he West? That now. Will he draft Magic Johnson? Will he draft Kobe we Bryant? Find you know out. what I'm saying? And what is he Jerry let West? Let me go back to his sentence. You earn trust over time. He, he's got to prove himself, and his staff has to, with the draft, with free agent signings, yeah. with trades, Why with would player you go there? development. They, they say they don't have any money, Mike. Tony, you don't go there as a free agent. You, you get right. drafted or traded there. Right, right. And maybe you go there because they got enough money. They got enough money for you because you were not a, a, a marquee free agent. Can you answer this one question for me? Why would baseball again go to an ownership group that the first thing they tell you is we're stripping the assets of the team. Well, uh, of course, Tony, you know, Major League Baseball commissioner got into a dust up with our friend Dan Lebertard on his show today and says, I didn't know this. He didn't say, says, says that, that Major League Baseball doesn't get involved in those specific sort of questions. Are they and it was crazy quite then? A dust up. It, it was you quite have to a know up. what the money situation well, wait, is. Well, you can know what the money situation is. It doesn't mean you're going to ask in an interview, what are you going to do with Giancarlo Stanton? It doesn't mean that. You could ask in the interview, what is the direction the team is taking? And if a okay, guy says, we've got to strip it down, you've got to say, well, you got to, you know, there's the door. You've got to get out of here. Something. How many World Series have the Washington Nationals won with their big payroll? Zero. How many have the Florida Marlins won with every other year rebuild? Two or three. Two.
Okay. So what the hell? How many fans do they have? 12. Thank you. No further. 200. No further questions, Your Honor. Let's get back into Monday's headline dealing with the sale of the Carolina Panthers. After putting out a video appealing to Carolinians, Sean Diddy Combs has apparently started lining up investors, according to Yahoo. For those of you like me who are completely skeptical that NFL owners who are literally afraid of Colin Kaepernick would partner up with Diddy, there's this quote from Bob Kraft at TMZ, quote, I'm a big fan of Diddy. He's a very good businessman, and I have a lot of respect for him, close quote. Tony, are there enough owners who feel like Bob Kraft to actually make this happen? No, no. I, I mean, I don't think so. I'm sure he's a very good businessman. He's got the clothing. He's got the music. He's got the vodka. 800 plus yeah. million he's been dollars. An, he's been an actor on Broadway. Personal wealth value. I bet it'd be really wonderful to be in a room with Diddy. But I think if you're Diddy, you need to take the temperature of that room that you're walking into to get a partnership in it. And I don't think you can invite Colin Kaepernick to be a partner when he's suing all of the people that you would like to partner up with. So I think the first move he's got to make is say a little, a little easy on that. You know how cynical I am about this, that half the owners right. would recoil. Yeah. But something happened to sort of change, move me off that. Um, I think it's this month or last month in Fortune magazine. There's a photo, not an artist's rendition, a photo of Sean Combs in a room with all these billionaires I don't know if he's the only African-American in there or not. I, th I thought he was. I could be wrong. But Sean Diddy Combs is in there with all these guys who already own teams. And he's like, he has relationships with them. Right. And it seems like, like Bob Kraft is saying, he already may know the temperature of the room. Now, the, the Colin Kaepernick thing, you can always back off. Look, you got it. we got people who do nothing but bluster in this country who actually run it. And they take the temperature of nothing, and they can get away with saying whatever they want. Well, they're not, so a, maybe they're not applying for Sean membership Diddy in the Combs, NFL at the but, moment. But, but, but Here, look, does it make sense for the NFL to reach out and try and get a black owner? Of, of course it does. No, they, does it? Yes, it does. And they should take him very, very seriously, and they should not be dismissive of him. There was a wonderful piece in the Washington Post today by our friend Liz Clark. And she talked about, because she's lived and worked in Charlotte for a bunch of years, and she talked about the embarrassment that the people in Charlotte are feeling now over Jerry Richardson and the fear that they have that that team will be moved because in 2019 you can get out of that lease. That's just around the corner. Yeah, but the problem is, Tony, we're not talking about a referendum in North Carolina or Charlotte. We're talking about I'm, 31 other owners, but none I'm, of whom look like Sean Combs. Let me ask you this. Is it good for the league? Do you think the league would feel comfortable, the people in Charlotte feel comfortable with a high-profile entertainer from New York City when you're worried about moving the team? I, I still have questions, and you do too. That's what we both yeah. feel like this is in, in, in big doubt. But fun. But fun. But fun it, to keep it, talking about? Well, Diddy? Videos? Let's, let's you know see. what? We didn't think anybody in the White House would be tweeting every day either. Let's take a so break. I got that. That's because you follow Twitter. I don't. I don't know. Coming up, did Thomas Davis Your boy. really deserve to have his suspension <laughs> reduced? Oh. oh. And it's a time to dial back the optimism about Joel Embiid and the Sixers. Do you know uh, Sean Combs? Do you no, know him? I've met him. Have you met him? I don't know him. You drink his vodka? No, you no, don't drink. I don't drink it.